Welcome back, America. It is a, uh, a remarkable time around the world. It is hard everywhere. In Israel, they've had five deaths, 2,500 cases. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu threatens to shut the entire country down. And now we have what looks to me in America like a court-ordered coup in the Knesset. I'm joined by Dr. Michael Oren, former Israeli ambassador to the United States, to explain to us what is the Israeli Supreme Court doing? Are you shocked or was this expected? It's expected to explain it to you. I need about two hours. <laughs> I'll give it a very, very short version. Is, is it, you know, you have laws in a democracy and you have traditions in a democracy. And no one's, no one's in the debate about the laws, but they're in the debate about the tradition. And the tradition is that after an election, whether, whether a, 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 a party that won the majority, in this case the blue and white, can then change the speaker of the Knesset, a very powerful position, which will then appoint the heads of the major committees. But blue and white, wants, once it gets the committees, wants to pass two laws, one that says that will limit the number of terms that a prime minister can serve, and secondly, will prohibit a prime minister who has been indicted from seeking re-election. Both of them are aimed at Bibi Netanyahu. It's clear. And probably the Supreme Court would strike them down. But in any case, uh, as a result of this action, the, the current speaker of the Knesset, Yuli Edelstein, a, a very fine man. I've known him since he was an activist in the Soviet Union in the early 1980s, spent three years in the Gulag. He refused to give up his seat. So they went to the blue and white went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said he had to give up his seat because there's a tradition. And, uh, and there it stands. The big problem here has to do with the nature of Israel's real Supreme Court. Unlike the Americans, the citizens of the United States who have not one but two opportunities to influence the composition of your Supreme Court. You vote for a president, you vote for a senator, right? In Israel, we don't have that. The judges on our Supreme Court are chosen overwhelmingly by jurists, by legal people, including sitting judges on the Supreme Court. And so in terms of the worldview, the Supreme Court stays in place, but it's really public opinion moves. In our case, it's moved rightward, and that's reflected in the Knesset. So you have a, a widening gap in terms of political worldview between the Knesset and the high court. And I knew it was going to come to a point where eventually the Knesset will say to the high, co high court, who elected you? You're not elected. This is basically a coup. You are trying to impose the will of non-elected judges on the democratically elected representatives of the Israeli people. That is the nature of our constitutional crisis. And it's so tragic, Hugh. At the time when 30% you know, of the population here is unemployed, five dead, 2,500 infected, we can't get a government together to actually begin to take concerted action beyond that which the prime minister has already taken. I am I'm very worried about Israel. Are you? I'm worried about this constitutional crisis. Fortunately, we don't have missiles raining on us just now. But, uh, you know, I, I've been watching very carefully the debate uh, in the Senate over the $2 trillion uh, buyout, the bailout plan, and, and I was impressed. And at the end of the day, uh, with all the deep political polarization in the United States, the two sides could get together and, and help the American people. Uh, we're not there yet. It took a lot of shouting. It took a lot of anger. Uh, the Democrats had to retreat under a fusillade of anger. Dr. Oren, will the current speaker dissolve the Knesset? Does uh, Netanyahu have anything up his sleeve? Are you going to have to go back to the polls? What the hell is going to happen? You, it's a It's a pandemic. And a threat on your border in Iran, probably collapsing and, and dangerous. Yeah, you know, you know, politically, it's it sound and fury signifying nothing, because at the end of the day, even if blue and white manages to oust the speaker, it looks like they'll be able to do it. They'll be able to replace them, and it looks like they're going to be able to take over the committees. But these two pieces of legislation that's basically designed to prevent Benjamin Netanyahu from continuing in this position will be turned down by the Supreme Court because the laws are what they call personal laws. They're not designed at you know, all the Israeli public. They're, they're aimed at Bibi Netanyahu. Everyone knows that. And it'll be turned down. So we're going to be back in the exact... Yeah, they're bills of way. attainder. They're, they're prohibited in the United States Constitution. Ex, parte, uh, uh, ex post facto laws and bills of attainder are prohibited explicitly in the Constitution. I assume that in the Israeli unwritten Constitution, they are prohibited as well. They are prohibited, mostly by tradition. And um, here's the thing. I, I remember last week on the show I said whether, they, whether they'll admit it or not, the two major parties are going to be going to a national unity government. And you thought that was funny. I'll say it again. I still think we're going to a national unity government. And there are talks going on behind the scenes because at the end of the day, unless we go to a fourth round of elections, and I don't say that Bibi is against it because he's been doing better through every round and, and, ben, and ben against has been doing worse through every round. 
Um, but to manage this crisis, you need a national unity government. I, my money is still on that. You know, you know, Michael, the world needs Israel right now. We need your scientists. I mean, we, we need the uh, startup nation. Do the, do the leaders understand that the world needs them right now? They understand that, but our scientists are doing very, very well, and I'm sure they're working around the clock. And the fact of the matter is Israel has been an example of how a society can uh, cope and successfully with the virus. We've done it very well, and we're a disciplined society. Um, so it, it, as, I, as I said before, yeah, we're like the, the world's highest functioning anarchy. Uh, <laughs> no, I haven't heard that uh, before. <laughs> you, know, you got it. The world's highest functioning anarchy. Sometimes I wish we'd be less functioning, and it would be more put more pressure on these politicians uh, to actually get. Oh, uh, you're good for together. a laugh a week, Doctor Oren. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Michael Pompeo is next.